There's another form of art that I don't think we usually consider journaling, but I very much consider it journaling. That is collage. When I begin a collage, I like to just simply look through magazines, images, and paper ephemera that I've collected. When I see an image or a word that speaks to me for any reason, I cut it out and I set it aside. I just think of it as spirit speaking through me and making these images available right at my fingertips. And I don't judge what I love. I just see what I'm drawn to and I honor that. I just simply notice my connection to the thing I'm looking at and I cut it out, no questions asked. I may or may not end up using all of this in the collage, but I cut it out anyway. And the goal of this is to create a visual vocabulary on which to build my visual mandala or my vision board or my collage. And it usually takes me 20, 30, 40 minutes of just being in a meditative state while I look through all of these images and cut them out. Now that we've combed through our magazines and collected our papers and images, now it's time to put everything together. I'm going to start by showing you my completed collage. I only do this to let you know where we're headed. Now, of course, I didn't actually know where I was headed (laughs) exactly uh, from the beginning. It always ends up a little bit different than I intended, uh, especially since I am letting it be an intuitive process. Because it's intuitive, because we are tapping into how we're feeling in the moment, what speaks to us in the moment, it will change because it's that kind of art making and that's the fun of it. I went through all of my little clips and images and picked out ones that were especially evocative and they began to tell their own kind of story. I like to take all of my clippings and separate them into three piles. One is backgrounds, one is words and text, and the other one is images or um, objects. These are figures, people, animals, plants, things like that, as opposed to textures, which are backgrounds, and obviously words, which are text. So the main image I wanted to work with was this woman. She is a painting of my own making, and I cut her out of one of the... um, creative alchemy decks that were a sample deck to me. I just love her so much. She has queen energy and that's really one I want to manifest this year is um, being sort of master of my own work and of my own self. Uh, I also found this other image of this woman in the bathtub and she seemed so rooted, so relaxed. And that is the other thing I'm bringing into being in 2021. So this sort of rooted quality and also this queen quality. I am a water sign, Cancer. um, So my sign is the moon. So I have Hokusai's famous wave painting, which was a card that was sent to me this year, and then a moon as well. As you can see, I'm taking these words which say tell stories deep down and I am pasting them in sort of a starburst fashion above the head of my main figure. I love this look, um, especially if you take a look at mandalas or you take a look at any Catholic iconography, there's always this sort of central holy figure and there's like a sunburst or a crown or a halo out of their head. And so I'm using that kind of iconography. I also found this beautiful background, which was a bunch of autumn leaves, which has this sort of earthy quality. So I loved the idea of the ocean and the earth, both depicted here in this um, collage. I found my word rooted, which is definitely my word for 2021. Um, And I'm still trying to figure out like which words I want to put down, but I really landed on generations and magic because I want to tell deep down true stories that help us heal generationally. And I think there's a kind of magic in that. And this is a big part of my work this year. So I wanted to make sure that made its way into my visual mandala. I also have a flower in there because that is a um, image for me about becoming. So I'm pasting this all down. It just takes time to figure out where things go. You trust yourself, trust your gut. Things are going to feel right. They're going to feel good to you. Go with it. I'm going to share with you in just a minute some sort of rules that I have for myself that are definitely rules I can break, but they're a great way to start out. 
Here's the whole collage. You can see it all together there. Not everything ended up where it started, so please let it be an intuitive process. This first thing you're going to see is that I have three main figures. This was really important to me. Uh, I think three is a really powerful, magical number, and so I really wanted this collage to reflect that. These three main images also have three moons or planets that surround them, so they are reflected in each other. Also, you'll notice that I have two solid background images, the Hokusai wave and the leaves, and I've put them in opposing places on the board, but it makes for some nice symmetry. It also leaves these two opposing corners more open and uh, a little bit of white space, which I like just a little white space so your eye has a place to land. And then for the main image, it has a really nice horizon line that's created because of that, and it draws your eye to the center figures. And those three central figures are really where I wanna focus, which are rootedness, queen energy, and this bird for me, which is about magic and flight. You don't have to make it as busy as mine is. I'm definitely a maximalist when it comes to collages. You could do something like this and make it a much simpler collage that still has the same kind of energy. So I offer this for those of you who are like, whoa, that was busy. I'm much more of a minimalist. The most important thing with any collage process is to keep an open mind and just have fun. Play is the operative word here. I love collage as a journal process and a journal practice. I've been doing it for over 15 years and it is still one of the most um, joyful ways I know to catalog how I'm feeling and what I'm thinking in any given period of my life. I hope you enjoyed this video. All of my offerings here are made possible with support and contributions from our community through Patreon. If you enjoy my work, read my words, and engage with my art, please consider becoming a patron. You can do that at patreon.com backslash Sarah Greenman. And you can always find me at sarahgreenman.com. Thank you.